In this video, you will be introduced to the concept of classes of a group. A previous video walked you through the details of the C2V character table, but did not go into detail on how to construct the C2V character table. Over the next several videos, we'll go through the construction of the C3V character table. As you can see, this character table is in some ways simpler than the C2V character table, but in other ways it's more complicated. Despite the fact that there are more elements comprising the C3V character table, there are fewer irreducible representations. Furthermore, one of the irreducible representations has a dimensionality greater than one. Lastly, some of the elements have been grouped together in what are called classes. This video deals with that last observation, the grouping of elements into classes. Over the next several minutes, we'll go through the definition of a class and how to group elements into classes. So first, we're going to start with the definition of a class, and we're going to consider the element A of a group G. We're going to take a second element, x, from that group, and it's inverse, x to the minus 1, and we're going to perform the following transformation, x, a, x to the minus 1 equals b, a different element of the group. We would say that b is the similarity transform of a by x. Furthermore, we would say that a and b are conjugate to one another. If we collect the similarity transforms of A by all elements X, we'll form a class of the group. Another way of stating this is that all conjugate elements of a group form a class of that group. We're now going to go through and use that above relationship to determine the classes of the C3V point group. So C3V contains E, a C3, a C3 squared, both of those along Z, and then three mirror planes that contain the z-axis. An example of a molecule that's described by the C3V point group is ammonia, NH3. What we're going to do is define a right-handed XYZ coordinate system and place it on that ammonia molecule. We're then going to define a series of 3x3 three three matrices that describe how those XYZ coordinates will transform for each operation of the group. So here is our x, y coordinate system. The z axis is coming straight out of the screen towards you. And here is the 3x3 three three matrix that describes the E operation. Going through, we can fill in the first row and first column of our multiplication table, the one for E, because we get the same element out. It's the identity element. Going through and developing 3x3 three three matrices for the other elements that are a little bit more involved, but we need to do those so that we can do the appropriate dot multiplication of our symmetry elements. So let's start by doing a C3 operation along Z. Doing that C3 rotation will turn A into B, B into C, and C into A. Focusing just on A, note that A is going from a position that has some value x and a y value of 0 to some position that has a different value of x but also a y component. So we're not cleanly converting x into just x or x into just y. We're converting this into a position that has both an x and a y component that's non-zero associated with it. Therefore, the C3 matrix does not have zero values on off diagonals. There's going to be a non-zero value for those off diagonal elements. We can use a little bit of trigonometry to determine how a generic vector with xy components will transform upon rotation by some value theta. So here are equations that tell you how the x and the y positions will transform given a rotation by theta. Here theta is 2 pi over 3. Plugging those values in, we get x prime equaling negative 1 half x minus root 3 over 2y and y prime equaling root 3 over 2x plus negative 1 half. Transcribing this into our C3 rotational matrix, we get this. 
If you go through and look at the various mirror planes and the other rotational axis, for most of those, we'll get non-zero off-diagonal elements. In general, for any rotation along the z-axis by some value theta, we can represent those new x and y coordinates with the equations that are highlighted in that pink-red color. And for any mirror plane, we can get new x, y coordinates for those equations highlighted in the blue color, where here that phi value for the angle is related to the rotation of the mirror plane relative to a mirror plane that's oriented along the x, z um, plane. Plugging those values in, we have these six matrices describing the six symmetry elements for the C3V point group, and doing the corresponding dot multiplication for our matrices, we get this multiplication table for the C3V point group. Obtaining the multiplication table is important because we have to determine the similarity transform by all elements A by X, so we need to know what the inverse of every single element is, plus it's convenient to see how different elements will multiply together. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and just determine the various similarity transforms for all of our elements. So first, we're going to just highlight what the inverse of every single element is, and we have this. E and our mirror planes are their own inverse while C3, its inverse is the C3 squared, and C3 squared, its inverse is C3. We're now going to go through and determine what the similarity transform of E by all elements X are. Going through, E times E is E times E is E. We can do the same for C3. So E by C3 is C3 E C3 squared. That results in E. C e by C3 squared equals E. E by sigma V1 equals E. E by sigma V2 equals E. And E by sigma V3 equals Z. What we've just shown is that E is in its own class. This will always be the case. For every single point group, E will always be in its own class. Moving along, we're now going to look at the similarity transform of C3 by all elements x. So starting with E, EC3E is equal to C3. Looking at C3, 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 C3 squared equals C3. For C3 squared, C3 squared, C3, C3 equals C3. As we move on to our mirror planes, we find that the similarity transform of C3 by sigma V1 is equal to C3 squared. So C3 squared is a conjugate of C3. The same applies for sigma V2 and for sigma V3. So what we've just shown is that C3 and C3 squared are conjugate elements and they form a class. For completeness, you would go through and determine the similarity transform of C3 squared by all elements x, but that in practice is a little bit redundant. And the reason is because we would find a similar relationship, that C3 and C3 squared are conjugate elements. Therefore, we're going to skip doing C3 squared because we've already determined which class it belongs to. So now we're going to move along to our first mirror plane, sigma v1. So going through and looking at A equaling sigma V1. Similarity transform of sigma V1 by E is sigma V1. Similarity transform of sigma V1 by C3 is sigma V3. Similarity transform of sigma V1 by C3 squared is sigma V2. Similarity transform of sigma V1 by sigma V1 is sigma V1. The similarity transform of sigma v1 by sigma v2 is sigma v3, and the similarity transform of sigma v1 by sigma v3 is sigma v2. So we've shown that sigma v1, sigma v2, and sigma v3 are all conjugate elements, 
and they form a class. Once again, you could look at sigma v2 and sigma v3 for completeness, but you would find that they're conjugate elements with sigma v1. So for all practical purposes, we've assigned every single element in the C3 point v point group to a class. So we've shown that there are three classes, one containing one element, e, one containing two elements, c3 and c3 squared, and one containing three elements, sigma v1, sigma v2, and sigma v3. Coming up, what we're going to do is we're going to use the class structure of the C3 v point group and consequences of something called the Great Orthogonality Theorem to derive irreducible representations for the C3 v point group.